Today it's time to get practical with Python's type system. In my last video I made a point about why you should use the type system of Python and now it's time for me to show you how. If programming is your thing, please consider subscribing to this channel for new videos like this on Mondays. There is nothing more for me to say, let's get coding. The best way to learn how to use Python's type system is to actually apply it to some code. I have prepared a function for us to type together. This function implements the Caesar encryption algorithm. Here is how it works. The encryption algorithm takes a text and an encryption key as input parameters. The encryption key in this case is simply a number. The algorithm iterates over every letter of the given text and shifts it by the given encryption key. For example, if the encryption key is 2, every A in the text becomes a C and every B a D and so on. Before we start, let's run MyPy, the type checker I'm going to use for this video, once. And of course, since we have no type hints added yet, MyPy has nothing to complain about it. Let's start typing. The first thing we are going to type is the function signature. The given text is supposed to be a string. To denote that, we simply add a colon after the parameter name and write the wanted type behind it. We can do the same with the encryption key, but this time we add int as the desired type. The return type of our encryption function is supposed to be a string as well. To make that clear, we add a little arrow before the colon of the function signature and write our return type after the arrow. Next, I'll show you how you can add types to your code inside of a function as well. There are two ways to add types to your variables. If you are using Python 3.5, you have to use a type comment like this. But since I'm using at least Python 3.6 all the time, I can also write it with a colon. Let's do that for the rest of our function here and run my Python. Everything looks good. If we call the function now, we should be able to encrypt a string. And to decrypt it, we hand over the encrypted string and call the function with the negative encryption key. Subscribe. Now that you know the very basics of the Python type system, let's do something more interesting. I have prepared a class that implements a binary tree for us to type. If you don't know what a binary tree is, I have something for you as well. A binary search tree is a recursive data structure that sorts elements while adding them in order to speed up searching for elements inside of it, at least on average. And here is how it works. Each element is stored inside of a node or subtree. Attached to it, there is a left and a right subtree and depending on the element in the current node, new elements will be attached to the left or the right. If a new element is smaller than the element stored inside of the current node, it will be attached to the left subtree. If it is bigger, then it will be attached to the right one. Let's add some more elements so you get the idea. Got it? Great. I won't go over the code here so much, but if you would like to see more videos on data structures and how they work, let me know in the comments below. And as always, I put this code into a GitHub repository so you can have a look at it later. Let's type this. Every binary tree can hold a value which is set by the constructor. To define the data type this binary tree can hold, we can simply add this data type in the member variable section of our class. Let's make it an integer for now. Next we have two members holding another binary tree. One for the left and one for the right subtree. But writing it like this will give us not only a type error but a runtime error as well. The problem here is that we are using the type binary tree inside of itself. So during interpretation time binary tree is not fully defined yet and therefore can't be used as a type hint. This is called forward referencing and to circumvent this error we can use a string with a type name instead of the type itself. The program is running now, but MyPy is not happy. The problem is that we are trying to assign a none value, which is of type none, to a member variable that is supposed to hold a value of type binary tree. How can we solve that? This is where the Python typing module comes into play. Inside of the typing module, Python offers us different predefined data classes, which we can use to either express special cases of typing 
or to simply make our typing more convenient for us. I won't go over all the different type classes inside of typing, otherwise this video would be way too long. But I will go over all of them that I use the most and otherwise focus on some more advanced typing constructs I haven't seen so often on YouTube yet. But let's get back to coding now. The first type class I want to show you is called optional. Optional is a generic type, which means it takes another type to specify itself. The optional type is either some type or none. And the some type is handed over as a parameter using these square brackets. MyPy is happy now. Let's move on. Typing the function signatures is simple, since we just want to make sure that the incoming value parameter has the same type as the member that this binary tree is storing. Add has no return value, so it is none. And find returns either none or the value type integer, so it must be optional integer. There's one more function here, which we will type later, but we will use it now to try out our binary tree class. The traverse function is iterating over all elements inside of a binary tree in ascending order and calling a callback function with every element one by one. We will use it to print all elements. Let's create a binary tree and run the program. First, we create a root tree and store the value 5. We try to find the value 5 and get it. After that, we try to find a 4 and we should get none. Adding a 4 and searching for it should print 4. And after that, I add some more values and call the traverse function with a print function to examine the contents of our binary tree. The output is as expected. Let's see if the typing is valid. We are trying to add a float value to our binary tree that is only supposed to hold integers. So how can we fix that? The easy way would be to simply use float as our value type because every integer is a float. But I want to use this error here to introduce you to another type class from the typing module, union. A union is a type that defines a set of types a value can be. Let me show you. I added a new type alias t, which is a union of type int and float. And I also replaced all int types in our binary class with t. But I actually forgot to import union. Let's do that now. MyPy is happy now, so what if we want to add a string? You could think that we just have to add string to our union type, t, and everything is good. Let's try that out. But doing that will not only give us a type error, but also a runtime error. Python is complaining that we are trying to compare an int or float to a string, which is not possible. And MyPy is actually telling us the same. So what's now? We want to have the ability to have a binary tree that can either store ints and floats or a binary tree that stores strings, but not to mix them up in the same tree. That's where generics come into play. Like I said before, a generic type is a type class that is specialized by, by a given other type. In our case, we want our value parameter t to be always of the same type. So we, so we don't mix incompatible types in one tree. Let me show you how to do that. First, import. We need to make our binary tree a subclass of the generic data class. With the parameter, we define the type variable we want to capture here. So basically, t becomes a variable that holds a type and therefore, everywhere where we use t, we will use that type inside of the type variable t. 
I know this sounds confusing and we entered the territory of advanced typing now, but bear with me, I hope to make this digestible for you. If we run MyPy now, we get a lot of errors. This is because T is currently a union and with that is a type on itself and not a type variable that can hold other types, which we need when we use generics. Let's change that. Instead of union, I now instantiate a type variable. The first parameter is the name of the type variable. I'm not sure how this works under the hood, but what I know is that if you want to use t as your type variable name, you have to write t as your first parameter as well. Next, there is a list of types this type variable can hold. In our case, a string, integer or float. So if I run mypy again, I will get errors. Why? Because we are instantiating binary tree with an integer value, the type variable t automatically takes the value integer. Now, everywhere where we use t in our code, we could imagine int. Therefore, the function add can only be called with an integer value. If we instantiate the binary tree with a float value, now every t is a float and running mypy gives us one error less. We still can't add a string and that's okay because int and float are not compatible with string but if we instantiate the binary tree with a string value now every t is now a string so we can now only add strings to our binary tree. Let's try that. Now all calls of add with ins and floats are prohibited. So I hope generics make more sense now and you see how they are something totally different than a union. Let's clean this up. So Every time we want to enable another data type to be used with our binary tree, we have to change our type variable declaration. And that is not optimal. A way to fix that is using upper bounds and any. Any is a type class that is the superclass of all other types. It is basically your get out of jail free card when it comes to typing. Whenever you want to denote that all types are good to hand over, you can use any. And what is an upper bound? An upper bound is a parameter for our type variable that tells it that all types that are the upper bound itself and subclasses of it can be used inside of the type variable. So by adding the upper bound any to our type variable t, we can use all data types we want. This is how you use it. And if you now think to yourself, couldn't we just use any instead of t directly in our binary tree? Then you made a common mistake and forgot the one reason for using generics in the first place. If we would simply add any as our value type, we could begin to mix different data types again. So let's use this power we have and add a new type we want to use with our binary tree. Role is a class that simply stores a name. Let's use it in a binary tree. I also added a new print function to print the names stored inside of the roles when inspecting our binary tree. Let's check if MyPy is happy. That works. Because any is our upper bound, we can throw anything inside the tree. But does it run? No, it does not. I added this error here intentionally to make you aware of one problem when using any. You pretty much lose all type safety here. So whenever possible, try to be more specific instead of going with any. The problem is that role is not defining the comparison operators less than and greater than, which our binary tree needs to function. Let's fix that real quick. Now it works. If we have subclasses of role and we want to only use these in our binary tree, it is a good idea to make role our upper bound. Let's add some more cl new classes and 
experiment with that. Now we can add admins and users to our binary tree. And MyPy is happy and the program runs as well. Here is another constructed example. Let's say you can't instantiate role itself, but want to store users and admins in the same tree. We have a problem. Now our type variable t is of type admin and we can't add values of type role anymore because they are not directly related to each other. A way to fix that is not to let MyPy infer the type of t, but to hand it over manually. Now t is of type role and we can add admins and users again. Last but not least, let's type our traverse function. The traverse function takes a callback function as a parameter and to define that kind of type, the typing module offers us a type class callable. Here's how we use that. Callable takes two parameters. The first is a list of types that define the types of incoming values into the function. And the second is defining the return value. In our case, the callback function takes the current value and returns a bool. The boolean return value can be used to abort the traversal at some point. This is actually of no real usage here and I only added it to show you how you can define a return value using a callable. But let's use this. Now the traversal stops as soon as the encountered name is Chris. Here's another example of how callables can be used. Let's say you have an asynchronous call to a database and you want to handle the success and the error case in callback functions. This would be a common function signature to have. The success case gets the value, the integer, and has no return value. And the error case has two incoming parameters, some integer, error code maybe, and an exception. Now you see how you can define a callback function with two incoming parameters as well. I know I skipped a lot of the commonly used type classes in this video, but I think if you know how to use optional and union, you are good to go to use list, dict, set, and all of the others as well. If you made it this far in the video, I hope you enjoyed the narrative I created here for us to explore the intricacies of the Python type system. If you did, please leave a like for the YouTube algorithm. Consider to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and leave a comment below if you have any question whatsoever. If you want, I hope to see you in one of my other videos again. Have a great day and a lot of fun coders.